Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to dive into Amazon and a lot of Shopify merchants in the DTC business are not on Amazon yet, but obviously there's a huge opportunity there. But Amazon is a beast on its own and we want to dive a little bit into the different areas that you need to consider and that you need to dive in when starting with Amazon. With that, I have Christo Araklief with me. He's the co-founder and CEO of Hyperson.io. He's a serial entrepreneur and Amazon marketing expert with passion. His various business initiatives have varied from brick and mortar establishments to tech startups. In the past seven years, he became expert in Amazon and positioned Hyperson as one of the top full scale Amazon marketing agency in the US and Europe. So let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Christo. How are you today? Hi, Klaus. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very good and excited for this podcast. Christo, Amazon, a beast on its own, as I mentioned. Um, sometimes a little bit difficult for Shopify merchants to get started in there because there's so many areas that you need to touch on. Um, give me a bit of an idea what you see is the first entry point for a lot of people when they get started with Amazon. Yeah, that's a great question. So basically, I want to start with the fact that I definitely recommend getting on Amazon after you already have a developed brand because it's so much easier. You have a lot of upper hand because of all the brand awareness that you've already gathered from uh, being positioned as a good e-com brand. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of upside uh, from getting on Amazon because if you compare yourself to all your other brands that are just starting off on Amazon and they count only on Amazon to give them that boost, they count only on Amazon's traffic, but uh, people that already have their Shopify store doesn't really matter which platform they're using and doesn't really matter how they're driving their traffic, but they've already established themselves as a brand in the space. So when they come to Amazon, what happens is that uh, this initial spill over traffic always exists and it's usually between 7 and 13% from, from experience. So uh, they're going to start getting some Amazon sales right off the bat which is very important because Amazon loves outside traffic. And mm -hmm. when they get that outside traffic, they're going to push you for many, many keywords on Amazon that you don't even expect because people are gonna search this and that and this and that. And this is gonna help you in this initial phase they call the honeymoon period in Amazon. Nobody knows exactly how long it is, but it's around between 45 and 60 days. So if you make a lot of sales and if you give indication to Amazon in this period that you are selling well, that your products are selling well, etc., Amazon is going to position you better for the next few months down the line. So this is an important period. But uh, for these guys that are already on Amazon, but they're not doing great, don't worry. I mean, yeah, the, the honeymoon period is great, but even if you miss it, there are plenty of things you can do uh, to pos still position yourself on Amazon. Uh, and many of them, people that come from the e-com space, they don't know about them. They don't think about it. And what people ask me the most is like, so can you, can you run our PPC for us on Amazon? Yeah, of course. I mean, PPC is an important part on Amazon, but uh, compared to other platforms like Facebook and TikTok and Google and whatnot, uh, PPC is just a small part and all the things that could be done on Amazon. And the other things that I would like to mention is, first of all, you need to have an impeccable listing. It needs to be SEO optimized. Your brand needs to look great because trust me, in 2023, there are amazing looking brands all over Amazon and you know the, the online space overall. So in order to, um, to be selected from from a customer you really need to stand out uh so this is a good start when you when you optimize as soon as you optimize your listing there are plenty of other things you can do uh, one of them being uh, rank yourself uh, this could be done in various ways but it works very similar to to google i'll compare it to google because amazon is very keyword oriented so if you want to be positioned for a specific keyword you need to be making sales from that keyword and this is where your focus needs to be uh, through your Amazon journey. Because if you rank for more keywords, you're gonna get more exposure and you're gonna get more sales. This is pretty much how it works. Okay. So uh, 
Yeah, this is, I'd say, a good start. But these days, Amazon are giving you a really hard time even when registering a brand because uh, a lot of Chinese uh, brands and companies are trying to exploit Amazon. And Amazon have made their procedure much more difficult these days. So your documents need to be very, very mint <laughs> they need to match all over the place so if you have one address or one company or one name whatever on one of your documents you need to have the exact same ones on all of your other documents so that so that amazon even accepts your registration which is okay. uh, crazy many people have uh, have issue even registering an account these days <laughs> okay uh, that's a good overview obviously you need to register first and i i know it's, it's it's relatively difficult so you need obviously to put some time aside while running your normal business to get started on amazon one thing that i found interesting that you said is that um when you come to amazon um amazon is happy to get outside traffic my impression always yeah. was like a um, amazon has the traffic people with a buyer intent on there and what i found out and and maybe that helps our listeners as well is if you have your own Shopify store, um, obviously building up trust with a new brand takes some time. And uh, when you're on Amazon, this trust comes basically out of the box because people think if you're on Amazon, you, you must be a legitimate brand. Yeah. Talk me a little bit you're... to when, once you have your account, once you have settled in or when, once you can um, start selling on Amazon, there, there's a couple of pillars there. There's advertising, you touched on design, content creation. How does that work? In which kind of um, flow do you, you need to work your way through this? So, you know, like everything else, if you've done it uh, a thousand times, it's one thing. And if you've never done it before, it's uh, it's different. So uh, we've been around the block for a while and uh, we know what works because we've tested so many things uh, on the on the image side, on the branding side, on the keyword structure side, on the PPC side. So, you know, it's about testing, testing, testing and seeing what sticks at the end of the day. But uh, so, yeah, many, many people actually ask me, is it better to hire an agency or is it better to do it uh, with an internal team or maybe I should just hire a freelancer, etc. So I would answer this the following way. If you already have an established brand in a sense that you're generating at least a few hundred thousand dollars a month on your Shopify, uh, why invest the time learning Amazon on your own when you can invest the time becoming better in what you already have invested time, which is driving traffic to your website, which is uh, pushing new products, developing new products, etc. And, uh, you know, to break, in, <laughs> to break in here, like, I would always recommend working with an expert for a channel that you have no idea about. Because Amazon is a beast, a beast of its own and it takes so much time to become an expert. I mean, honestly, we, we've been doing it for the past uh, 12 years, some of us, and we still face difficulties with Amazon because Amazon treats you really poorly when, when you're a seller compared to the end client. For them, the clients are the people who buy on their website and the sellers are being treated really, really, really poorly. So you need to be prepared. You need to know how to answer. You need to know how to deal with that. And with a team on your side who's been there, it's it's much easier. And to answer your question, uh, if you're just getting started, you need to obviously optimize your listings, uh, select all the right keywords that need to be there for SEO purposes. I recommend sending your stock into FBA because compared to FBM, which is sending from your warehouse, Amazon gives you some initial juice and ranks your products better if they're fulfilling, if they're fulfilling the, the orders for you from their warehouses. Um, then when you select the keywords, make the text sound uh, like a human is going to read it, like, nice and understandable rather than putting all the keywords in just for the sake of seo which is not a good practice then um, uh, when people uh, put their images on amazon there are a few things uh, i can i can mention here that that work so your main image is the most important uh, one on your listing it is the one that makes the first impression It's the one that when people scroll down amazon they see this main image and compare it to all the other products on amazon 
you need to make your best effort to differentiate yourself there. So Amazon have very strict terms of services, like put your uh, product on a white background, like people are going to receive it and nothing else. But to be completely honest, play around with that, even put things here and there, test out if Amazon is going to accept it because, okay, it may not be a hundred percent according to their terms of service, but even a small difference compared to the other uh, product is going to give you uh, a huge upper hand uh, in that. And then when people arrive on your listing, you need to have a beautiful, beautiful looking listing that represents your brand in the best possible way. So if you've already done that for your website, here the format is, of course, slightly different, but you can still incorporate the good practices you've already implemented on your website to make it work. So... Uh, Name all the, the good features your products have, how it helps uh, people, include UGC videos if you have, because Amazon have that option as long as you have brand registry, which I highly recommend. So register your trademark, go through the brand registry, and you have a lot more features unlocked, and you're much more prepared and secured when somebody's trying to hijack your listing or attack your listing or try to bring your listing down for any reason. If you are the brand owner, you're protected and you can communicate this easily with Amazon. If you don't have that, Amazon just asks, and who are you? <laughs> and if you cannot provide proof that you're the brand owner, uh, basically they don't they don't care. For them, you're just, uh, you're just the next <laughs> hour. Uh, but yeah, just put your best effort to make things in general look good and make a good impression uh, on the customers. Similar to what mm -hmm. you've done in your, uh, again, uh, landing page, but with its own specifics. So if you have already artwork and copy, then you need to start, you don't need to start from scratch. You can use this also on Amazon. You touch in a, a little sense. bit on risk. In a sense, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You were touching a little bit on the risks. Uh, for instance, somebody's um, hijacking your your uh, listing and stuff like that. Are there any other risks when I go to Amazon and try to sell there? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a great uh, question. And there are many risks when you go on Amazon. <laughs> First. Uh, one of them is if you don't uh, comply with the wording that you can use in your product. So basically, you cannot have any promises and bold statements like uh, this product is going to cure your boldness or whatever issues you might have. Uh, you cannot claim stuff like that in your listing. So there's a you know pretty extensive terms of services that you need to read uh, if you want to be prepared for that. But uh, we've had issues in the past where uh, Amazon just brings our listing down for no particular reason. And we start investigating and we got super lucky because we asked around and somebody had the same issue and we were able to bring the listing up in less than an hour. And then Amazon, a week later, they sent a newsletter to everyone sharing that they forbid keywords uh, like bacteria, fungus, and a few others. But they didn't send that newsletter before. They sent it after they bring all the listings down. And trust me, you don't want to stay without sales for a week. I mean, this is <laughs> this is ruining your business. And uh, it's very important to be super informed in that space because, again, Amazon does not care <laughs> about the sellers and they really, really do whatever they want. On okay. the platform. Let's talk a little bit, not about the risks, but also about the advantages being on Amazon. What kind of results do you see from D2C brands that are coming from Shopify or WooCommerce or any other, other platform and going, starting to sell on, uh, on Amazon? Yep. I'll be happy to answer that. Uh, so the advantages are huge to be honest, because uh, we have estimated that. And I've spoken also with many other companies, uh, like uh, with our advisor from uh, Tracio as well, uh, who has seen thousands and thousands of brands uh, going on and off Amazon. But as soon as you bring your brand on Amazon, it brings that trustworthiness with it. 
as many people, they don't trust landing pages. So, okay, you're going to push them down your funnel. They're going to see your product, but many of them are not going to end up buying your product. Let's say some of them are Amazon buyers. And I'd say this is a big number. What, what these people do is they go and check if the product is this on Amazon. And if it is on Amazon, they would most probably buy it there because they have a Prime account. They trust the platform. They know they can return it in the easiest fashion in a couple of days, whatever, as soon as they receive it. And this gives them an ease of mind. So you cannot change these plans and people. So you'd rather help them buy your product on a channel they're comfortable with rather than pushing them down your, down your funnel. And there are going to be many people like that. And so first, you're going to convert these people that otherwise you would not convert. Second of all, as long as your brand is there, people are going to start noticing it on Amazon. And also the ones that are checking if the brand exists are going to feel more comfortable. So this creates much more sales down the line. So when you open Amazon as a channel, uh, many times your sales in within a year don't just double, they usually quadruple or more just because these channels are helping each other. People see your brand here, people see your brand there. And in people's minds, they start thinking, oh, this is a legit, legitimate brand. I can trust them. Uh, because, you know, in 2023, people rarely buy something as soon as they see an ad. I mean, they do their research, they're going to think about it, but if they see it on Instagram and on Google and on Amazon and on Facebook and here and there, and then you remarket them as much as possible, at some point you convince them that they really want to buy a product. Uh, so this works in a similar fashion. Being on Amazon tremendously boosts your uh, brand's credibility. That's what I, that's what I'd say. So uh, this is uh, an important factor. And then if you know what you're doing on Amazon, you can uh, definitely uh, turn it into a very profitable channel because for example, our, our promise and high percent to our clients is that in 10 to 12 months starting to work together with us, we're going to match their website sales. I'm saying this because it's possible. It's not a made of thing. And we achieve that uh, in 95% of the time. And worst case scenario, we get it to 60% of their website sales. But we not only get them to these percentages, it, at the same time, their website sales have increased as well. So this is what I was trying to explain. Their sales mm -hmm. at the end of the year haven't doubled. They've quadrupled or more. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. But it's about focus. It's about focus again. Uh, if somebody is great running Facebook ads, they'd rather do that. And if they want to partner up with an agency or hire someone, they'd better do that. So this person or team helps them out, get them to where they want to be. And it, if some point in time they feel like they've learned so much <laughs> of Amazon that they don't want, they want to do it themselves, let them do it. But for getting started, just the learning curve is years. <laughs> so, yeah, I can I can imagine. Um, I totally agree on the synergy effect that you get from your own brand, from your own online presence, and with Amazon, and then obviously this has a direct impact on your profit, on your revenue. Um, now, as you said, Hyperson, you're around for a long time, and and you're basically on on the top of what's happening on Amazon right now. What's, who's your perfect customer? Do you work specifically with certain yeah. verticals, industries, niche? Yeah, we do have specific uh, customers. Uh, basically, any D2C brand that is doing $300,000 a month or more in sales on their website, no matter how they're driving the traffic, we can help them by matching their website sales on Amazon. This is what we do. The thing is that before that, when they're smaller, it's not the best of ideas to spread too thin, you know, among other channels. But we think that this is a kind of a nice, um, nice place where they are at making at least three hundred thousand a month. They need to have their own brand, not drop shipping, but brand they've built, created, and they're selling it. And we can definitely uh, help these guys the most on Amazon. The only products we're avoiding are. CBD and drug related products and clothing and apparel because these niches are very, very specific. Uh, 
yeah, it could work as well with these niches, but it just takes much more time and much more effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're selling commodities or cheap products from dropshipping stores from China, then obviously it's much more, more difficult. Tell me a little bit about the onboarding process. How can I get started with you guys? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's very easy. We get in touch, you get on a call with me. We go through a really nice uh, conversation where I explain uh, how we work, show you a little bit of our case studies, because, you know, we've really been around the block and we have uh, tons of case studies to, to prove it and happy clients. Uh, and then when we start working together, I connect you with your account manager and most of the communication goes through Slack. You have weekly calls and it's just very important for the brand owners to be engaged because I noticed that people who get on these calls and people who uh, we communicate daily with are much more successful than brands who think, oh, these guys are going to do everything uh, for me, I don't need to move a finger. Yeah, in a sense, we we do. But if you are more involved or if you hire a person to work with us so that everything could happen much faster and everything happens smooth, uh, you, you're going to have much more success. Yeah, makes total sense. Tell me a little bit about the pricing structure. How does that work? Of course, uh, when we're getting started, uh, we start with a with a fixed fee. So depending on how many products you have, the fixed fee is usually around three thousand five hundred and five thousand dollars. And then this is this is basically the time and place where we invest in the client. Uh, but as long as soon as we bring them to a certain amount, let's say a hundred thousand a month, if they're just getting started, or if they're already on Amazon and we increase their sales with a hundred thousand a month, we move to a ref share model. Uh, where we get rid of the fixed fee and we move to uh, 7% of the revenue, lowering that number over time with volume until we cap it at around 4% when we get 1 million a month, as this is absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds just fair because um, as you grow, um, you earn more and obviously the client makes much more money. So I think that's that's a fair model. Cool. Um, before we come to the end of our coffee break today, what's a final thought you want to share with our listeners? What I want to share is uh, that multi-channel uh, marketing is the way to go these days. So uh, yes, focus on one channel, become successful there, but then try to test as many channels as possible to see which one is going to stick for you. Uh, because you know, it's uh, this way you're going to turn your uh, hobby brand <laughs> into a real successful, recognizable brand. Okay, cool. Where can people find out more about you? They can find out more on our website, hyperzone.io. And yeah, we have plenty of the information there, so they can check it out. Well, I will We're actually, I just want to <laughs> share something. We are just uh, launching a new website uh, in the middle of uh, November. Uh, so uh, they are going to be able to experience our new website very, very soon. Maybe by the time this episode is out, it's uh, <laughs> it's already going to be up. But I'm sure it will. I will put the links in the show notes. Much well, more I will put the link in the show notes so you will be just one click away. Christo, thanks so much for giving us an overview on how to transfer into Amazon. And I agree 100% uh, with you. It's, it's better to have an expert on your side because it's a complete universe out there. I tried it and I was completely overwhelmed. So having somebody who knows what they're talking about, that definitely makes sense. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you as well, Klaus. Talk to you soon. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? 
but perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.